Hi everyone, welcome to the Using Technology Better show. I'm Mike Redding, one of your hosts from Using Technology Better. And with me, we've got a couple of great people. I've got my co-host, as always, Blake, uh, from McKinnon Secondary College. Uh, Blake, how are you, mate? Yeah, very good, Mike. Very good. Very excited to be on this show today. We've got a very special guest here joining us, Kim from Edpuzzle. And uh, he's going to talk about his product, Edpuzzle, which um, I first came across, actually, when we were doing some training, Mike, in, uh, in NARA. One of the one of the teachers pulled me aside and showed me this great little little app for um, editing or cropping videos and adding questions in and all sorts of stuff. And I thought it was a nice little app. Have a look at it. And since I've looked at it, I've just been um, really uh, impressed with how easy it is to use. I've had quite a few teachers um, take it on and use it themselves. So uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting. Um, so how about you, Mike? How are you going? Yeah, doing really good. Just uh, back from my ten week, uh, ten week, ten day tour of New Zealand, and I uh, had a great time. Just learning lots uh, from teachers over there. I uh, really like the way their their system is organised and structured, and uh, it's been good. Uh, amazed to hear that uh, you found out about this in little old Nara, Hey, who would have thought that with uh, with our training there, you would have learnt something that's been great. Uh, I showed Ed Puzzle in all of my training sessions around New Zealand, and the teachers really loved it. So, uh, really looking forward to digging into today's session and just being able to ask some questions and uh, just figure out how do we use this a little bit better, even. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So, uh, Kim, I mean, over to you. Do you, uh, do you want to introduce maybe the product, what it is, to someone who doesn't know anything? Yeah, sure. Well, <laughs> first, thank you very much for for inviting me. Um, it's a pleasure. I'm, as you can see from my accent, I'm, I'm, I'm from North Dakota, uh, the U.S. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm from <laughs> Barcelona. I'm, I, I was a teacher, a math teacher, in Barcelona, and, um, well, basically, I tried to use videos as many other teachers are trying right now, and I, it was all this concept about the flipped classroom, using videos to learn at home so that I could have more meaningful time at school, and. Well, I mean, the flipped classroom, it's, it's very nice. It's all about Khan Academy, uh, creating your own videos. Uh, but it's not very easy to implement if you want to experiment with videos. Uh, because basically, or you use uh, content already created by Khan or other servers, or you reinvent the wheel to create your own videos. And then <laughs> the biggest problem is that even if you spend your weekends creating content, you don't know if the students are actually watching the video. So there is no accountability, and it's it's a passive experience. I mean, uh, Mike, you know all about engagement and collaboration, and you know the flipped classroom is tough for both things because there is no collaboration between teachers. And second, it's not very engaging. I mean, if you have a 30-minute video about scientific equations, um, it's not going to be engaging even if it's on a YouTube video. Mm. Um, so we build that puzzle to help teachers uh, make any video their lesson. Uh, that's that's a basic idea. So teachers can reuse con uh, online content, public on uh, free public videos, um, or even upload their own videos if they create it using uh, any kind of software, um, and make those videos uh, a lesson. Uh, by introducing some kind of an interactivity so they can record their voice at any point they can trim the video and take only a piece of it and and one of the key features is that they can embed formative assessment at any point so they can embed open-ended questions or multiple choice questions uh, they can embed images they can embed just comments or links to other pages and um, and then the teacher, so they share this video with their students and they get beautiful hassle-free analytics to know if the students are actually watching the video. So they can see each part of the video, how many times they watch it. So they, they, it's, like, it's like magic, like believe me, I, I was a teacher, I, I'm not the technical person behind that puzzle. And I'm amazed on what uh, the other co-founders have built because Teachers say, like, I can't believe this is true. This is superpowers. And and we have seen so many teachers fall in love with the product that we, it's actually um, what we are looking for. Mm. Certainly, uh, it's been it's been well received here. And, and I think 
it was really just discovered randomly uh, for us. I mean, how's it been in the in the states? So you're based over there. Uh, has the uptake been fairly large? Are you guys pushing it? How's the response been? So we invest all our money, all our time to improve the product because we believe if the product is easy to use and useful enough, um, teachers, as I said, will fall in love and they will share the product with other teachers. Mm. So um, it has been very well received. Um, we spend also a lot of time on customer service. We try to answer any email in less than 30 minutes. Um, so with those two factors, having a good product and a, an excellent customer service, um, we have seen that teachers like to help us and they spread the word. That's great. So how many teachers have you got using Edpuzzle at the moment? Have you got some data around that? Um, so now we have uh, around 40,000 teachers. and. Uh, wow. And we have teachers that use it on a daily basis. We have a really good retention rate of teachers on a weekly basis with 55% of them using it uh, more than twice a week. And, and, but obviously, this is just how they use it. But we care a lot on if the students actually learn through videos. Uh, not many ed tech companies care about that. But we think it's very important to make sure that um, we have success in the long run. Because if students don't learn, <laughs> there is no point on building an ed tech company. So we have seen many teachers teach, like, um, just to give you an idea, like all the, sub all the lessons in a, uh, in a month in just two weeks and having 50% better results than the year before. Wow. Um, that's interesting. So, so is that all flipped learning then? Is that is that sort of the the way you're promoting, or the way that most teachers are using the product through this sort of flipped idea, flipped classroom? Yeah, that's that's a really good question. Um, we have teachers, obviously, using it for the flipped classroom. It's uh, a huge trend here in the U.S. and obviously in the world. Um, but we have seen teachers use it in different ways. So, in a blend space model, also it works pretty well. So if you have certain number of students um, that, as in my case, they were, uh, they had really high rates of absenteeism. Mm. So you can have those students learn at their own speed and try to catch up the rest of the class while you help the rest of the class to, uh, at the same time. Um, we have seen also teachers use videos as um, the central point of the class. So they project the video with the questions and the comments on the full screen, and they discuss with the students when the, the video stops at a certain point to, to answer a question. So um, we, we, don't, we don't push the, neither the content or how to use that puzzle. We basically provide flexible tools, really easy to use, so that any teacher can build the perfect lesson for their unique classroom. Mm. Super cool, super cool. So uh, if we just take a step back and look at you, I mean, you're obviously a really passionate guy about about uh, education and you come from that teaching background. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it for you that, that you see as, as the power of the, you know, using video? Like, is it that you can flip your classroom or is there something maybe more deep-seated about that style of, of teaching that, that really excites you? Um. I, I, one of the things that surprised many schools is that when I go there to, 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 to talk with them, I always say that I care a lot about relationships. And they say, wait, you're a, an ed tech company. You should care more about the technology, how teachers use the technology. And I think the technology is just a tool. And, and teachers should care a lot on um, knowing exactly who they have in front of them and what exactly do they need. If they don't need videos, you shouldn't use videos. And that's kind of surprising from somebody that uh, actually spends 100% of their time going through videos and trying to convince teachers to use videos. But it's true. I mean, each, as I said before, each teacher has a unique classroom, and they should be able to build this relationship with each one of the students so that they know if they need videos or not. Um, I'm very passionate about technology because um, I think it's very powerful, 
but I also understand that not all teachers uh, feel comfortable using technology, and that should be fine. I mean, teachers need to feel comfortable. Also, they need to understand who they have in front of them and what exactly they need to be um, prepared for the future. Mm and try to give their best so that the students can receive an excellent education. That's it. And if, if that includes videos, it's fine. If that includes having a pen and a paper, that's another kind of technology, that's fine. Um, I, 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 I think maybe I'm too naive, but I think teachers around the world uh, can have a huge impact um, using the technology they have in their hands. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think that's what we're all about here is taking, you know, this show especially taking this technical side of things and looking at how it can have an effect on the on the classroom and on the teaching and learning because that's the ultimate goal of, of all of this stuff, isn't it? So that's really interesting, really interesting. So if I'm a teacher, um, where does video really work well? Like if I'm looking at, you know, do I want to integrate something like this where I can ask questions and, and get feedback off videos, um, where does that really work well? Where's the, where's the place that you think that that would be best used? Look, um, I, and that will be a personal opinion. Maybe teachers will disagree with me, but I truly believe that video is a game changer. Um, the fact that you can learn at your own speed from a visual tool, that never happened before. Uh, before we had the TV and we thought TV will replace the teacher, uh, but you couldn't stop the TV to, to rewind and watch again if you didn't get a concept. Mm. So, so the video, I think it should be, for, it, that's my opinion, they should, it should be like a central part of, or, or, or the best friend for teachers uh, because it's an excellent a source of content that can help students learn at their own speed. And that never happened before. Um, with that being said, um, I had a really challenging school when I was a teacher in Barcelona. We didn't have access to internet. My students, I mean, uh, <laughs> they, 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 if they had a laptop at, at home, that was maybe 10% of my students. So, but that's not an excuse. So I said, okay, like, I understand that you have a terrible situation at home. I understand that you don't have access to internet. I, ha I understand that um, maybe you only use YouTube when you, f when you want to look for music videos. Mm. <laughs> but that's not an excuse to understand that um, learning through videos is the future. If you want to learn anything, you have it on YouTube. So we, the teachers should know that they have to teach the student how to use properly YouTube to learn anything they want in the future. And I told them, like, I don't care if you have these lim limitations. I just want to make sure that you learn this skill that will be necessary in the future. So I told them, it's mandatory to watch these videos. I don't care where you go. You, if you have a, a Facebook account, I'm sure you will find a way to, to watch this five-minute video. And they found a way. So they went to the public library. They stayed in, at school for uh, a couple of hours in the afternoon. So they found a way to, to watch those videos and learn how to learn through this platform. Yeah, that's a good point. I would often say that students will always find internet if they need it. Always. Uh, sometimes when you're talking to schools, they're saying, oh, you know, what about equity and people who don't have internet and so on. I'll tell you what, those kids are so resourceful. They'll know where every uh, internet source is around the neighbourhood that doesn't have a password on it. Uh, you know, McDonald's free Wi-Fi. And mm -hmm. uh, I used to teach some of the kids who were homeless and they'd still have be able to access Wi-Fi, but they couldn't access a house to sleep in. So. Uh, I think sometimes we just got to get over our limitations, like you say, and that anywhere, anytime, contextualized learning is such a powerful tool that just motivates students to learn. And uh, I think it's it's fantastic. And I think you're right too. Like there's a difference between uh, embedding a little bit of content on a you know a YouTube video into your lesson just to break it up, because you know after all we're the digital generation and we need variety. Uh, I think 
teachers are starting to move past that now from saying, well, let's just add that as a different medium and we'll have a bit of writing and a bit of reading and a bit of reflection and a bit of this and a bit of that, uh, to saying, I think we can really start to dig in and find some great technology, uh, some great videos that are really well put together, have some great content, uh, but well produced and they'd be able to use those. So uh, I, I like what you're thinking in terms of where this is heading in, uh, in terms of content and delivery and so on. Just wondering if you can uh, maybe share your screen with us and just show us a little bit about how Edpuzzle works and uh, and how a teacher might use that in the classroom. Let me share this. Okay. I hope you can see exactly my, my screen. This is my demo account. Um, and here is the dashboard. Uh, so basically the home page where you can see your last assignments. You can have some kind of information here to know if the students are doing their homework or not. Uh, you can invite other teachers and you have the recent updates. Uh, you will see many updates because we try to improve the product every single week. And here you have uh, short videos that explain, uh, for example, let's click on this one. So you have a, a short video that explains the due date, like a one minute, 50 seconds video with one question at the end just to check that you understood <laughs> the video. Um, but that's just the dashboard. So here, from here, you can go anywhere. You can share with other teachers on Facebook, Twitter, or you can start creating a new video, a new class, a new assignment, and a project. And I will explain each one of them. So let's start creating a new video, um, because it's the, the main part of Edpuzzle. And here we have the, all the content created in Edpuzzle. We have videos created and uploaded by teachers here. You can share content with other teachers by just typing their, their name. So let's say, for example, I know a teacher in my department, Mr. La Torre, um, and he has amazing videos. I could just save the videos created by, by him and change a few questions, and I will have my own lesson. So it's a great tool to collaborate using videos also in, 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 in a school. Um, apart from Edpuzzle lessons, we have videos from YouTube, uh, Khan Academy, LearnZillion, National Geographic, TED-Ed, Veritasium, Numberphile, uh, Vimeo, TeacherTube, and something that not many teachers know, but the ones that find this, uh, this tool is that they can also upload their own videos. And, and that's great if you already use your own screencasting tool. Um, because you upload it here, you share it with your class, or maybe you embed a few questions first, and you are ready to, to track uh, the understanding of your students. So let's get back to my home page. Um, let's say, let, let me create a video. Let me, let me create a video. So I'm going to use this video here. And so when you're, let's go back one step, when you're searching for a yeah. video, can you find teachers who are not part of your school organization? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, it... you can, you, here you have all the content created by Edpuzzle teachers. Right now we have um, around 70,000 video lessons created, um, and it's growing really fast. So um, is that OK, part? so if I create a video, it goes straight into the content library for everyone to use. Yes. Can, you, can yes. you make that private as well, or that everything's just public by default? Um, teachers can email us to make some, th some content private, because um, if they care about the privacy of the students, or maybe they record their, their class, or things like that. Um, but we try to engage teachers by sharing uh, their content with other teachers, um, because we believe this collaboration can, can build better Better lessons. Same for three, um, so let me let yeah. me search. Um, I don't know. Let, let's type something simple. So addition, for example. Um, here I have already. As you can see, look, um, we have different videos, and and let's say for example, I like this one. I'm gonna use it, and this video. Uh, I'm going to trim it. I'm going to take only a piece of it. Maybe I want to take the last part of the video because I don't like it. I, like, I don't like the first part either. And, and this is a trim the crop feature. Um, if I want to move to the next step, 
this the audio track that it's great for language teachers or foreign teachers that want to translate or explain with their own words the whole video. Yeah, that's cool. But if I like the audio, um, Edpuzzle enables you to, to just jump and use only the tools that you need. So I'm going to jump to the next one because I'm not going to spend three minutes now recording my voice. Um, and you have the audio note. The difference is that the audio note enables you to go to any point of the video, stop it, and record your voice. So let's say, for example, here I want to say, uh, record a warm introduction. So I'm going to allow here, hello, kids, pay attention to this video because you're going to have to answer a few questions. Uh, remember to take notes, and if you don't understand something, rewind it. Something like that, I will record my voice and... Five eights minus... Hello, kids, pay attention to this video. As you can see, gonna I'm going to stop it. Eight. I'm going to stop it. <laughs> but as you can see, it's a, a really fast way to make the video more personal, and students learn better if, if they hear a familiar voice. I can always remove the audio note, um, so it's just one click and I remove it. Um, I can record as many audio notes as I want, and this gives so much flexibility to the teachers. So language teachers use it to, um, I don't know, for listening comprehension or, or to clarify some point, maybe um, try some uh, vocabulary at some point. Uh, it doesn't, so that's, that's the kind of flexibility we're looking Teacher. Just quickly, I'm gonna to jump for, yeah, for sure. move on. The, with the video cropping, can you crop ver like three parts of that video? Can you? And just right one. now, we only offer uh, just one part, but yeah. we are studying the uh, the possibility to enable teachers to crop two two pieces of the same video. Okay, and what about two videos together? I know a lot. In fact, I had the the exact query this afternoon. They wanted to make a. Uh, what's happened to my life in the 20th century, you know, through through my life of the 21st century, um, mm -hmm. uh, where they make a video of all the big events like World War II or whatever it may have been. But there's no real way to sort of put those videos together yet, is there? There's, it's just one video you can, you can crop. Our idea is not to enable teachers to merge different videos because that would make the collaboration piece more difficult. Mm. Um, but you can assign multiple videos to the same class uh, for the same date, for example, and that that will give uh, also students the possibility to watch several videos all together. Cool. Mm. And let's jump to the last part that is the most used feature uh, by far. It's that you can embed questions at any point. You just click and insert a question. You have open-ended question where the student has the possibility to write the answer. So. Uh, what do you think about, I don't know, something like that. So when the student gets to this point, the video will stop and they will have to answer. And we have seen teachers use it in any domain. So this gives also a lot of flexibility because you can ask from 1 plus 1 equal 2, and then you give a, they give a response to how do you feel after watching this part of the video. So it, it works for science teachers, for language teachers, for anyone that wants to use the video and get some information from the person that watches it. Total parts. Um, and, and then if I, I have the open-ended question, I have the multiple choice question that is automatically graded and the student receives feedback um, when they answer it. Um, so for example, a true or false question. I'm going to say it's true. False, and I'm going to say maybe, flip, there you go, done. And, um, and I can always edit these questions. I can, I can change whatever I need. I can, we have here also a, um, a science text equation editor. Uh, I can insert images, links, and we try to keep it very simple. So only the tools that teachers have asked as to, to include in the platform. Um, so any suggestion is more than welcome, always. Um, um, Subtract both the numerator. Oh. So now that I'm done, I'm going to save it. I'm going to change the title. I'm going to save it. And here, 
I can assign it directly to one of my classes. So I'm going to assign it to my math class, and here I have a different configuration of my assignment. Uh, I have prevent skipping and I have the due date. The prevent skipping is something that many teachers ask because we have seen that uh, the teachers complain, okay, I don't know if my students are actually watching the video and I don't want them to skip parts of the video. So we created the prevent skipping because we received this kind of feedback. Then so the that present, can I just interrupt for a sec? That present skipping is um, stopping the students from fast forwarding or skipping or answering a question? Uh, both. I, I will show you now how it looks from a student perspective, and and you will see it's very cool. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and and then I have the due date, so I can say, okay, I'm gonna assign this video to watch. So it starts today, but I'm gonna it has to be done by next Sunday. And so you can schedule be, this. You can schedule your lesson plan to start in two weeks. Yes, and yes, and that. Yeah, so we have teachers that in September they had already all the lessons created in Netpuzzle, yeah. and the due date feature enables them just to assign all the lessons uh, in advance, and they don't worry about anything else. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to save it, and you're going to see how it looks now. So here I have the, the different assignments that I created for this class. Um, here I have my addition. Um, video, I can change the, I can edit the, the due date, or uh, let me, let me, here we have some actions, we can embed the assignment into any LMS, blog, um, website, I mean, wherever you can embed a, a, a YouTube video, you can embed a, a Netpuzzle lesson, the students will watch it in your LMS, blog, or whatever, and you will receive all the progress information in Netpuzzle. It's kind of magic. That's the kind of magic we're looking for. <laughs> um, That's here we have viewers. Can I still ask a quick question? Can yeah, you sure. um, can you put that into a Google form? You know how you can insert a YouTube video. Uh, um, have you tried? Can you get a uni unique URL address that might work or something like that? Yeah, yeah. You you. So let me click here. Um, here you have the URL. You have the embed code. You can share it on Twitter, Facebook, or email. So yeah, we, which as again, we try to keep it very flexible and um, enable teachers to use it however they want. Um, and here, I'm gonna watch it as a student so that you can see uh, exactly how the students experience this, um, and you will see what the prevent skipping means. So if I click and I start watching the video, how do you subtract fractions? Usually, the example, the, the students will try to. Skip and move forward to the question, and they can't because we prevent. They have to watch the whole video. In this lesson, if they open a new tab, they open a new tab to to go to Facebook or Twitter or 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 do another thing. The video stops, and when they go back, it continues. I like that. That's cool. You know, and one of the one of the interesting things with Khan Academy, I was speaking about flipped learning uh, to one of the guys who does it here. He was on our show actually, probably about a year ago now, I think. Um, and he was saying one of the issues he's having is class control, where they'll just open another tab, even in incognito using Hapara, they'll mm -hmm. look like that they're using Khan Academy and the video is playing and they're watching it, but in actual fact, they've got it on mute and they're listening to music or watching a movie or doing something else. So. So the fact that that actually pauses and forces your attention into that window, that's really good. Mm -hmm. And actually, we are working on, uh, because obviously, the students always try to find a way around. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen that they open another, uh, so another browser. So if I'm using now Chrome, they open Firefox to go to Facebook or things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that actually, I don't know if it's deployed already, but it will also stop the video. So. Obviously, the best way is uh, management 101. So tell your students that you have all the progress that I will show you next and, and say, OK, hey, you have to watch this video. I want you to learn through this video because it's important for this reason and this other reason. Um, but if you don't do it, I will know it. And that usually is the most effective way to, to prevent skipping. But obviously, we try to find other ways to, to help the teacher use videos effectively. Um, now I will show you the progress that I think is a, a really powerful piece of Edpuzzle. So now let's say that all the, my students watch the video, or as you can see here, we have 82% of them that watch it. 
I'm going to see the progress, and you will see what I'm talking about. It's um, here I have um, some a piece of information of of my class. I can see who didn't watch the video really fast. So Kyla and Paul didn't watch the video. Meredith, Gloria, um, they they are struggling with the video because they the score is 50%, and then the rest of the class are doing okay, but maybe I need to check something. Here on the top, I have some information. So question number one, they had 0%. So I, I must check this kind of question and see what happened. Here, well, let me, let me go back because maybe I grade it wrong. So I'm going to go to Meredith, and here you can see that I have more information for a specific student. So I can change this because 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And um, here I can have more information for a specific student. Um, as you can see here, I have how many times they watch each part of the video. Um, and this is very powerful for the teacher because you see exactly where the student is struggling. Um, and you don't have to repeat the whole video. You just say, OK, you didn't get the piece where the video talks about, I don't know, uh, fraction addition. So I'm going to explain you this in the classroom and, and help you through it. Uh, because it seems that you don't get it through the video. And I'm the teacher, and I'm going to help you through this process. Um, and this is a piece of information that not many other tools offer. I mean, if you go to YouTube and you try to get the analytics, you see, like, I don't know, 35 people watch your video. But you have 36 students. <laughs> it's really hard to know who is not watching your video. Um, I, I'm, if I jump to other students, um, I can see, for example, this student. Well, that's the student I use for my demo, demo, demo presentations. But that's, a, that's the idea. So this student watched this many times this part of the video. So you know that you have to start uh, explain the first 20 seconds, because they are not getting it. Um, and. Well, yeah. Oh, that, that, they get distracted very easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's good. I mean, I, I, we, we had a discussion inside the team to know, OK, what's, how many times they have to watch the video? Like, one is OK, two is good. I think We think two is good. Three, uh, it seems like something is not working. More than four, like, there may be a problem there. And that's the kind of info insights that we're trying to give the teacher on how to approach the next class. Um, with uh, just 10 seconds of watching this information, they should know exactly what's happening. Mm, that's yeah. great. Are you able to grab that uh, analytics information and export it somehow? Yeah. I'm just Here thinking about sometimes we want to use it in reporting. and. Mm -hmm. um, Here yeah. you have the export grades to CSV. So you can mm -hmm. download it and upload it to your uh, gradebook or do whatever you want. Um, let me, so here. Another thing I can do is I, I can archive uh, this lesson. So let's say, for example, this was for November 2nd. I can like, archive it. And I will save it to November. And that's usually very useful because I have all the information organized by month. Um, and in the future, we will enable teachers to have the progress per month. Uh, as, as you can see now, all the progress is just for one video. But here, you will have the aggregate data. Um, cool. Another cool thing that not many teachers know, I'm sorry that it's taking so long, but it's, it's just that I, I'm really excited about this product. It's not, it's not by, because I made it, well, m with my co-founders. It's, it, it's just that as a teacher, I think it's uh, really useful. Um, here I have the project-based learning uh, tool. This is a completely new uh, feature that enables teachers to give the tools to the students to create their own video lessons. So the students are the ones creating the videos, and you are the one receiving all the content. Um, and this is how it looks. Like uh, this for simple addition, I assign a project to my students, and I receive all the videos created by my students. So I can check a video, and the student will um, have recorded their voice, embedded some questions, trim the video to take only the piece that they want. And this is a way more deeper experience for the students, because they will have to watch several videos on YouTube. And they will have to pick which is the one that they think it's good uh, to understand the lesson. They will have to record their voice. 
they will have to embed questions to to create um, to to help other students to learn through this lesson. Um, and if the teacher says, students, sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, can, can other students mark this or does one teacher have to sit down and watch 28 videos? Um, that's a really good question. We give uh, the teacher the control because we have seen that um, sometimes, um, so, so the teachers fear the, the fact that uh, cyberbullying can happen mm -hmm. through videos. So we enable teachers, okay, like, I really like this lesson. I just watch a few minutes, maybe check the questions, grade the, book, grade the video, provide some feedback. And, but if I really like this video created by Meredith, I can save it into my content and sh assign it as any other video to the rest of the class. Um, this content is 100% uh, private, and we try to keep it private between teacher and student, too. Cool. So that was the four sections, wasn't it? You've got your um, question, or your videos, your con my content, your classes and projects, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. If I go here to home, I can create the project, and this will give the tools to the students. Okay, and, cool. And that's it. Well, if I forget something, yeah, you can create folders. I mean, um, you can create folders to organize your content. So we have seen teachers with more than 300 videos. Um, and the fact that they have folders help them organize a little bit uh, better all their content. We have the iOS app for students. If they use iPads or iPhones, they can watch uh, their lessons there and you will receive all the information and the due date that I already explained. Yeah, well, it looks very comprehensive. And I know that teachers that I've spoken to who are using it, I just love that it's really actively developed, I think. Um, mm -hmm. One of the big feedback that I've had from it is that uh, the development team, yourself and, and your team, are very accommodating for new ideas, new features. So I think that's always good, from a, especially for a new company coming up trying to um, compete with the big boys. It's really good, good to see. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a question, though. Like You've got a lot of features in there, a heap of stuff. Um, how much does all this cost? That, yeah, that's true. I forgot to say. This is 100% free. Um, Yes, and teachers ask me that a lot and um, because they see a lot of value on Edpuzzle. But I, as I said, as you said, Blake, um, we have teacher DNA in all our features because we ask for this kind of feedback. If, the, if we don't have teachers using Edpuzzle in the class, it's impossible that we get uh, a good product. Mm. So we are very open to receive feedback to build better better features, um, and that's only possible if we, if we give it puzzle to, to, to a test. Also, the fact that the teachers, all the content that they create will be public for other teachers gives that puzzle even more value to, 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 to bring new users. And, and that's something that we believe it's more valuable than charging a teacher on a monthly basis. Um, mm. Also, we have many business models uh, that can turn around content, um, turn around the organizations like schools or maybe publishing houses. So uh, we know that that can be monetized in the long term without having to charge teachers or students. Yeah, it's really interesting. Really interesting. Um, so uh, before we sort of move on, Mike, did you have any questions about the product itself? Uh, just, I noticed that you've got iOS apps. Uh, what platforms is it running on? Obviously, I've seen it in the Chrome Web Store. Uh, are you running it through Microsoft in Windows 8 or something like that as well? Mm -hmm. So um, it works on any browser. Um, so you can use your laptop, computer, um, iPad using the, the browser. But we have seen that with tablets and smartphones, um, Sometimes it has some problems to track the student responses. So that's why we started to develop the, the, the apps. Uh, we developed first the iOS app. To, and again, uh, we are a small team. We're trying to learn as fast as we can and build mm -hmm. really fast. So we started with just one app, even though we, we have in our roadmap to build the Android app. Because if we start with two different apps and something is not working on one, probably won't be working on the other one, and two different languages at the same time can be 
uh, very, very challenging. So we want to make sure that we learn as much as we can from the iOS app before switching uh, to the Android app. Hmm. That's great. I've got another question too, just around copyright. Uh, obviously, you're taking YouTube videos and so on, and then you're uh, you're changing them around and you're cropping them, and then you're making them available for other teachers to use. Have mm -hmm. you had discussions around uh, schools that are nervous around copyright infringement and so on? Hmm. Uh, yeah, so that, that's on a really that? good question. Um, actually, you are not modifying the the original video on YouTube. You're ju you're just using the API uh, on YouTube. To, when you say trim, actually you're not trimming the video. You're just saying where the video starts and where the video stops. Um, when you're rec recording the voice, actually the video mutes and you we synchronize the the video with your voice. When you when we stop the video and embed the question is on next to the video, so it's not on top of it. Um, actually, the more the video is used the more views the video has on YouTube because we, we're using the YouTube player in our platform so um, if somebody is making money out of it they will get more views and therefore they will receive even more money. The fact that we don't charge for it it's also and, and that we are 100% focused on education it's something that works with YouTube terms of use mm. um, and, and so far we haven't received any kind of copyright issues and if we, if we receive one we say in our terms that if that happens we are uh, we have the power to take that video down because we don't want to get into trouble. Yeah, uh, that's good. Just had a question on that in New Zealand last week and mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure about the back-end technology and how to answer it, whether or not you guys were making a copy of the video or just uh, annotating no. across the top of the... Uh, um, and, and that's also one of the reasons we offer teachers the possibility to upload their own videos is uh, because let's say some let's say I upload a video to Edpuzzle. Uh, I create a video, I upload it. What happens with that video? So that video becomes public to any teacher to use, and we say that in our terms too. Um, and if I decide to take it down, but somebody else has used it, we create a copy so that the other teachers that are using that video will still be able to use it. Um, and that's something also very important to say because uh, we are trying to create this community that share and create content uh, to, to provide a better education to our students. Mm, that's really great. So what, what does the future look like for, for Edpuzzle? I mean, uh, it looks like, you know, just from the very short time that I've seen it evolve in six months that you guys are kind of heading for that uh, Google Classroom of video. That's where it looks like you're going to end up with, you know, creating these classes, putting people in, and watching them track them over over a period of time. Is that your ultimate goal for this this product? Is to base, you know, entire entire sort of content um, design around videos and have that entire, you know, coursework and everything in there? Is that where you're headed with it? Um, so we are headed. I, I it's it's hard to say, um, because. It, it will depend, obviously, on how teachers use new technologies in the classroom. We have seen a huge trend in video, in videos, so that's why video is a central part in Edpuzzle. But let's say in the future we start to see that um, assignments online are very useful. So why not including assignments in the Edpuzzle platform that you can share and embed and after watching the video? So creating all these online to tools that can be crowdsourced, uh, that can be flexible because you can adapt to your own class. Uh, if, if that helps teachers give a better education to their students, that can be included in Edpuzzle. Yeah, great. So it's really driven by the, what teachers are doing and, and, exactly. and the feedback yeah. you're getting. Yeah. And, but always trying to keep it as simple as it gets, uh, yeah. flexible and, and powerful and beautiful. Also, it's very important. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> so talk to me about uh, you know sneak peeks. Can you can you give us any goss on what's happening, what's coming, what's what's some exciting stuff that's going on? Um, something exciting. There are many exciting things coming on. Um, so for example, the multi crop is something that uh, we are we are analyzing if it's possible. We mm -hmm. are very confident that it is, but we have to make sure again to keep it very simple so that teachers don't get confused. 
Yeah. Um, also, we are improving uh, the content creation so that it's easier and faster to 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 create content. And um, and then after that, the well, something that it's I think it's gonna be a game changer for many teachers that are already using Edpuzzle is that. Um, but that's top secret. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> we we want to enable teachers to have all the aggregate data for a specific month, and that's going to be huge because you will see progress on the student, and also um, you will have more information on is is that student learning through videos or not? Um, mm. Are they watching, paying attention to the videos? Um, so having all this information will give the teacher even more power. To be more effective the next day at school, it'd be very good to be able to track a student against the class. That'd be that'd be exactly. really useful. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time, Quinn. Um, do you have anything extra, Mike? You want to add before we finish up? No, I just wanted to say I think it's I think it's a fantastic tool. I really like it. Uh, just really like the user interface. Sometimes when you have a free product, it's kind of like you get what you pay for. Uh, yeah, like I really appreciate the effort uh, that you guys and the team have made. Just in how it's simple to, to use the user interface is great. I was just looking on the Chrome Store. Uh, you've got a hundred percent of people who have rated it have rated you as five star, which is which is enormous. So yeah. I'd encourage people watching this to go and uh, you know download and have a play, but then go back to the Chrome Store and and give it a good rating and a comment. So I think um, I'm just really impressed with your attitude. I, I love what you're doing around education. I'm, I'm really glad to have had the time to spend some time with you. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I mean, if you feel free to grade to grade uh, our tool on the iOS platform or or on the Chrome store, like that would be fantastic. <laughs> and spread the word too. Like, let all the teachers know about it, possible because the more teachers we get, the better content we'll be able to provide other teachers. Yeah, absolutely. That's what this show is all about. So thank you so much, Kim, for your time. I know you're a busy man. You've got probably plenty of uh, priorities to see to running a startup in in the States. It can be... Well, right now it's 10.30 p.m., so uh, I'm just going to watch a movie and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, thanks for your time, and uh, we will see you next time on the Using Technology Better Show. Perfect, yeah, anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate your time.